All right, so we've got two cylinders here. This one's gonna be our revolver cylinder, and this one's gonna be the flute cutouts in it. So the first thing we need to do is turn it into a spill. That's a cylinder with the uh, the the bolt shape, basically. So the quickest and easiest way I can think of to do that is simply to get rid of this face. End guns don't matter at this point, but then we'll alt and right click on that line to select the entire edge loop. We will extrude, right click, scale down, grab along the Y, and we'll just continue. We'll go maybe from orthographic right view so we can get a nice curved shape. Then lastly, we'll just hit F to fill, and we have ourselves a nice little fill. So now we'll just scale it down. Actually, want to keep roughly that length, so we'll scale it about like that, and then we'll scale Shift Y to maintain its length. We'll give it something like that, maybe. Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna go to vertex snapping. I'm going to put my mouse here and snap it to the edge here. So I'm gonna GY, hold down control for snapping, snap it right to that edge. You'll see it's not lined up perfectly. Now, this cylinder actually has 32 and that's not divisible by six. So I'm actually gonna recreate that. I'm gonna make a new cylinder and I'm gonna hit F6. I'm gonna make it 36 vertices so we can line things up equally. There's six bullets in a cylinder obviously. So I'm going to rotate it along the X 90 degrees, give us that uh, orientation back. Now I'm just going to simply select this vertice right here and then I'm going to go Shift S, cursor to selected. Then I'm going to take this shape and then I'm going to go shift this selection a cursor that'll throw it right in there maybe move it in a little bit there's easier ways to do this you could spin an array all the way around too actually maybe that's what I'll do that'll be much easier I will tab into edit mode on our cylinder grab this face shift s cursor to selected tab out shift a Add an empty plane axis. We'll just call that cylinder rotator. And then we'll take this, our little flute that's set up on a perfect uh, 90 there in, in regards to all three objects. And then we will, we're going to set its origin to the same origin as the rotator. So we'll select it and hit Control Alt Shift C. Origin to 3D cursor. So its origin is over there. You can see if we rotate it along the Y, it goes all the way around nice and smoothly now. So what we're going to do is add a modifier array. We want six of them. We don't want an offset. We want an object offset. Cylinder rotator. And then we want to take our cylinder rotator. Oops, first I have to take this and hit Control A and apply rotation and scale. Then take cylinder rotator and we go 360 divided by six is what obviously? 60. Rotate along the Y 60 degrees. That gives us six nice little bullet shapes. We will apply that so we can bake all that mesh data in. And now we add a new modifier to our little bullet shapes, the Boolean modifier. And we choose the object we want to apply it to. The object would be the cylinder, obviously. So you can see intersect, if we apply that, that gives us that shape out of them. We'll undo that. Union is going to try to add them together so now we have that shape the one we're looking for is difference though we want to cut holes out so we hit apply 
move them out of position, and you can see how that works. I just did that backwards is all. So we want the boolean on the other one. So we grab our cylinder. We had a boolean modifier. We do a difference. Our object is, oh, I got the wrong one selected again, sorry. Cylinder, boolean, object, cylinder 001. We want a difference and apply. Now we should be able to move this out of the way. Nice perfect flutes cut and nice geometry. Um, having everything lined up perfectly does make this a lot better because sometimes it can create some pretty ugly geometry if it's not lined up exactly. But, and sometimes it just doesn't work at all. But for the most part, you can generally just throw any mesh into a mesh, add your Boolean modifier, choose whichever one you want. And generally it will cut cut out exactly like that. Whoops. Didn't want that obviously. Now we could probably bring those back, scale them down, do it again. Apply, move that out of the way, and we have some small, maybe some like <laughs> uh, 185 calibers, 0.185, but we have little bullet holes too. Obviously, you could go back, we could scale along the Y, scale it up a little bigger, maybe from 3D cursor. No, it's going to do the same thing. Individual origins. No, that won't work. I would have had to have made them bigger originally, but you get the idea. Go back, add your Boolean difference. Cylinder zero one, apply. Move it out of the way. You got nice bullet holes cut all the way through, and your nice flutes. Make it smooth. Add an edge split, roughly thirty degrees, and you got a pretty darn nice little. Uh, cylinder there. It's it's high poly, but obviously you can uh, decimate that and unsubdivide it a few times. Uh, maybe unsubdividing isn't going to work so well in this situation. Collapse it a bit, and all that gets pretty ugly too. Due to all the crazy shapes and all the end gons and stuff, this would be something you would have to manually retopologize or use a cylinder, obviously, that maybe had only eight vertices, like a, an octagon instead of the 32 that I used for each of these. That adds a lot of faces, obviously, in there. I mean, each one of these is two tries, right? So. If we triangulate it, you can see just the crazy amount of triangles it creates, but it is a good way to quickly create a nice little uh, cylinder. It's a great way to cut holes and things, or add things for that matter. I mean, if we wanted to take a monkey, Suzanne, Intersect them. Maybe the other way around. Now Suzanne has a gun cylinder on her face. Little holes cut out. So it's got its uses for sure. 